The goal of this screencast is to explain and demonstrate how Uniface implements web services call-in and call-out. Over the years, web services have transformed the Internet into a middleware platform that allows software programs to collaborate online. Web services offer a new way for implementing communication between applications and services over the Internet. They provide an implementation-independent mechanism through which applications can interact based on the use of agreed standards. Web services have public interface and bindings. Those are defined on an XML document called WSDO file. In there, there is a description of the operations that the service provides and how they go over the network. Any special data types used are embedded in the WSDO file in the form of XML schema, or XSD. The standard message format used by web services is normally XML but other formats like JSON, which stands for JavaScript Object Notation, can also be used. All the XML messages are exchanged using a protocol called SOAP. SOAP generally uses HTTP as the transport protocol, but SOAP may also be used over HTTPS, which is the same protocol as HTTP, but uses an encrypted transport protocol underneath. Uniface supports both web services call-in and web services call-out. Let's have a look at each one of them in more detail. By Uniface calling, we mean that a Uniface service can also be deployed as a web service for use by web service clients. The SOAP Request Dispatcher, or SRD, is a Java servlet that's responsible for brokering SOAP requests and WSDO requests. SOAP requests are dispatched to Uniface via the SRD. A connection is established to the Uniface router that assigns the request to the Uniface application server for processing. The Uniface application server detects that the request is a SOAP request and passes it to the SOAP driver for conversion. WSDO requests are handled only by the SRD. It retrieves the WSDO from disk, dynamically adds the HTTP server address of the web server and returns the data to the web server that then passes the data back to the client. The calling request for web service works in this way. A client makes a request for a WSDO and sends it to the web server that redirects the request to the SRD servlet. The SRD accesses the WSDO and passes it back to the web server, which passes it back to the client. Next, the client makes a web service request and sends it to the web server that redirects the request to the SRD servlet. The SRD activates the Uniface service component. The SOAP calling connector detects that this is a SOAP request, makes the SOAP data types mapping, and activates the operation defining the request. The Uniface service component handles the operation. If this is an asynchronous communication, there is no further activity. For synchronous communication, a response must be passed back via the SOAP connector, SRD, and web server back to the client. Deploying a Uniface web service is very easy. First, you create a Uniface service or session service, entity service, or even a service with no Uniface implementation, such as COM or C. Then you export the signature of your service by entering slash sto slash middleware equal web service and the name of the service. This will create a WSDO file and also an XSD file in case you are using complex data types. Next step is to create a folder called WSDO under the WebInf folder and copy the WSDO and XSD files to there. If you are using a Uniface default installation, you don't need to do anything else, but it's worth understanding how the configuration works. The first thing is to check the SRD specification on the web.xml file. Here you find the SRD mnemonic, which by default is called VASV, but it could be called something else. The same name must appear inside the uRouter assignment file. Let's have a look at those files. Here's the web XML file, and inside we will find the specification for the SRD servlet. And here we can see the mnemonic that was used is called VASV. The same mnemonic, or UST, must be found inside the uRouter assignment file. If you make change to the WebXML file, you must restart the web server. And if you make change to the uRouter assignment file, you must restart the uRouter. And then you're ready to test the web service. 
In this demo, we will show a Java application calling a Uniface web service. We started the Uniface development environment, and here we have a service called my underscore ws that has three operations. Those operations will set and return data when called. Let's compile this service. And now let's have a look at the service signature. As you can see, the implementation of this service is Uniface service. Let's now restart the Uniface development environment and here we are going to enter slash sto in the command line to export the signature and to create a WSDL file for the web service. This will generate a file called my underscore wsdlw.wisdo in the project directory. We are going to cut this file and move it into a folder called wisdo underneath the web inf directory. And now it's necessary to restart the web server, which in this case is Tomcat. After restarting the web server, let's now have a look at the WSDO file. The WSDO is an XML file that describes the web service and how to access it. The WSDO will define all the operations and also the type of binding for this web service. The next step is to go to the command prompt and execute the Java client application, which we'll now call this web service. When a Uniface application calls a web service, this is known as web service callout. Since Uniface 9.2, Uniface callout is supported not only on Windows, but also on Unix. The reason for this was introduction of the SOAP driver 2.0 that doesn't require the need for Microsoft SOAP toolkit. SOAP driver 2.0 supports more popular binding styles, which are RPC literal, document literal wrapped, and document literal bare. The binding style RPC encoded can still be used in conjunction with the SOAP driver 1.0. To enable the callout to work, the WSDO file of the web service to be called must be imported by Uniface in order to create a signature. So let's have a look at the demo. In this demo we have Uniface calling out to an Axis web service. Axis is a SOAP engine which is used by the Tomcat web server to access the Math web service. Axis is not part of the Uniface architecture. Start by having a look at the Axis web service WSDO file. As you can see, the binding style used here is document literal. Therefore, you must use the SOAP connector 2.0 to call this service. Check that the IDF assignment file has SOAP 2.0 connector defined. The next step is to import the math web service interface definition. This is done by using the slash STI switch in the command line. As you can see, the signature has now been created. Let's go inside Uniface and open the math service signature and compile it. You can see the implementation is defined as SOAP. Now we are going to use a Uniface form to call this web service. Here you can see the detail trigger activating the math service web service. And when we run this form, we can now enter any numbers to perform the adding operation.